Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range with a ballistic shield. The shield comes to us from Highcom Security. They make some really high-end uh, armor systems for law enforcement and military personnel. What I'm holding here is one of their shields. This one measures 20 inches by 34 inches. It's 3A rated, it's NIJ certified. That means this one is capable of stopping most handgun threats. This one also has the optional viewing port, which we'll play around with here a little bit later, that allows the user to stay behind ballistic cover and still use a weapon or see what they're doing or being able to navigate a hallway. Again, these are designed for law enforcement and military personnel. Uh, this shield that I'm holding here, the way that it's configured, it has a curvature to it, has the ballistic glass up here, and is in a, a NIJ 3A certified. This one retails for right around 1800 bucks. You can option them different ways. Highcom is a, a great company that loves working with law enforcement. They were kind enough to donate a shield just like this one to my law enforcement department here, the Valparaiso PD, which I greatly appreciate and which is why I'm doing a video today to show these off. Uh, I really want to support this company that supports America's law enforcement. This shield is actually made right here in the United States and it has the good old Made in USA sticker right there, which means a lot to a lot of folks, myself included. American jobs, protecting American law enforcement. So the shield weighs about 15 pounds. It's designed so that the individual officer or whomever is using it can carry it and protect themselves. It's small enough where it, it protects all the, the vital organs from the head all the way down to the hips. I'm a big guy, a smaller guy, of course, it would protect more. They also have other shield sizes, both larger and smaller, but it only weighs about 15 pounds, so you can easily hold it and advance forward with the viewing screen. Uh, the ballistic glass here, I can actually use a weapon and, and advance forward, fire my weapon. I can keep myself protected. I can crouch down to the ground and, and really give myself some cover. And again, this one is a 3A rated one, which is handgun threats. They also make one that's rated up to rifle threats, which of course would be heavier. So there's a trade-off there, right? Lighter means uh, it's easier to, to hold for extended periods of time if you're clearing a house or if you know, you're know you in a higher threat area where you might actually have a rifle threat, you, you'll want a heavier shield, which means it's gonna be heavier to lug and a little bit more uh, work to get it up and down hallways and things like that. So what we're gonna do today is play around with this shield. First of all, we're gonna shoot with it and engage some targets and just tr try to get a feel of what it's like. I've never used one of these before. Uh, what it's like to use one while shooting and trying to use it as ballistic protection. And then we're gonna turn this sucker around and we're gonna start shooting at it with a number of different handgun calibers just to see what it can stop. We're gonna shoot the armor itself and we're also gonna shoot the ballistic glass right here and just see how much it can really handle. We're gonna shoot the snot out of it today and we're probably gonna hit it with some calibers that it's not rated for too, just to see what happens. Here's some of the stuff we're gonna shoot at the shield this afternoon. Let's start off over here. Well, in the back, this is gonna be at the end. We're gonna take this 450 Bushmaster and we're gonna hit it with one round of that to see what happens. But more conventional handgun calibers is what we primarily are curious about because again, it's rated for a threat level 3A. Out of my CZP-01, we're gonna fire some 124 grain Freedom Munitions ball. This will be a NATO ball simulator, okay? But then we have a couple of different nine millimeter loads, one of which is the nine millimeter Luger from Underwood. And this is the Extreme Defender. This is the stuff we tested before that passed right through threat level 2A soft body armor. We're gonna try some of that. This is the Plus P Plus, it has a 90 grain bullet. And then we also have some of the Liberty Ultra Defense 9 millimeter. This stuff has also been known to pass through to a soft armor. So we're gonna try these two really hot, lightweight, fast moving nine millimeter rounds. Gonna shoot some 230 grain ball, some Freedom Munitions out of the FNX 45. But we're also gonna fire some of them, or some of that ammunition out of this ump. This ump is manufactured, of course, by HK, except this one started off life as a semi-automatic, uh, just nasty looking thing. Thanks to Tommy Built, it now looks like a proper ump. We're gonna also test it with this because this has a 16 inch barrel versus about a five inch barrel. Then we're gonna use 10 millimeter. Again, we're gonna use Freedom Munitions on the 10 millimeter. This is some 180 grain XTP ammunition. Gonna do some 30 carbine, just kind of curious what's gonna happen there. And again, we're gonna use Freedom Munitions on a 30 carbine. And uh, this is 110 grain round nose load for the 30 carbine. Already talked about the ump. Then we're gonna move over to the Origin 12. This bad beast, we're gonna launch some Remington 12 gauge slugs. These are two and three quarter inch slugs with a muzzle velocity of 1800 feet per second. And the, the uh, slug itself weighs seven eighths of an ounce. 
We're also going to use some of the Hornady Critical Defense Buckshot. I believe this is nine pellet, uh, I'm sorry, eight pellet at 1600 feet per second. So we're going to hit the shield with that as well. And then last but not least, we're going to do the P90. We're going to use some of the Red Box 57 from FN and then some standard American Eagle as well. And that should be enough. These shields are light enough and small enough that you can use them to walk towards a threat. But you can also, because of this viewing port, you can stay behind cover and have a weapon and use it while you're even walking forward. Now I've been doing it with my CZ-75. Now I'm gonna do it with my <laughs> BNT TP9 and see how well I can do it. This thing's just a little bit heavier than your average handgun, but I still should be able to shoot it as a handgun. So you can get behind the shield, use the viewing port, you can cover your vital areas with the shield. Legs, of course, are, are exposed, but now you can walk forward and with this viewing shield, which is a ballistic shield right here, you can still aim the weapon and advance. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna crouch down <laughs> right by this steel target and shoot the heck out of it. So, these things are pretty darn handy. They only weigh about 15 pounds. You can see how it supports your arm. You have the option to put a sling on it as well if you would like to. And it works right or left-handed. You can see that it works left-handed as well. Or you can support it like this. Pretty cool. You know, it's only once in a lifetime you get out to the range with a uh, ballistic shield like this and a challenge target dueling tree. Let's see how well I can work that dueling tree while behind the cover of the HICOM shield. Well, I had to screw it up twice out of 18 rounds, not too bad. This thing does get a little bit heavy. You can kind of rest it on your hips if you had to for a stationary period of time. But uh, yeah, it's kind of funny trying to hold 15 pounds out there and hold a gun sideways. You have to hold it kind of like that. But uh, yeah, I can still work the dueling tree okay. I wouldn't say I did exceptionally well, but no complaints here. We have the HICOM shield just resting against a tree here. This allows a little bit of freedom of movement as if it were being held by somebody on the other end, right? So when you hit it, it's not firmly originally mounted to anything solid. It will flex just a little bit. We're gonna step about five yards away. And the reason we're shooting it from about five yards is because this thing really is designed for close quarters combat. And I don't wanna really get any closer than five yards to it. So we're gonna step over to the five yard line, which we've marked off over here. Gonna start off with the nine millimeter and we have three rounds loaded. The first round I have loaded is the Extreme Defender, plus P plus. Right behind, behind that we have the Liberty loaded, and then we have 124 grain Freedom Munitions NATO ball loaded. And I'm just gonna start on uh, probably the right edge and just move my way down on the target, all right? Or I should say shield. So let's go ahead and try the Extreme Defender first. I'm gonna take a knee. And I'm going to put that round right over on the right edge of the shield. And then right below that, I'm going to put the Liberty round. And then right below that, 124 grain ball round. All right, let's go see what happened. Now this is pretty interesting, guys. So you can see that the protective plastic back here, it's anti-spalling, broke, but the round hit right here. That was the defender, and it did not penetrate, did not make it through. Right below that, right here is the Liberty round. It hit right here next to where the armrest 
is, and again, it did not penetrate. Right below that is where the 124 grain ball round hit. Hit right here, cracked, but did not penetrate. So it stopped all three threats from five yards. All right. Now we're gonna move over to 45 ACP. I have an FNX 45, and I'm gonna shoot a 230 grain ball round, Freedom Munitions. I'm gonna shoot just to the left of those nine millimeter rounds. All right. Now I'm gonna take the exact same 230 grain ball round. I'm gonna put it into the ump, which has a 16 inch barrel. I'm gonna put it just below that first 45 round. All right, locked open. The weapons are safe. Let's go ahead and take a look at the target. Okay, so here's where the 245s hit. This is out of the FNX pistol, and this is out of the ump. No penetration at all. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way because really there's no need for it anymore. I've pretty much destroyed this shield. All right, so that first round hit right here at the joint of the arm support did not penetrate. The second 45 round hit right here. You can see where it kind of bulged out, but again, zero penetration. So yeah, seems to be holding up pretty well. With my Smith & Wesson 1076, we're gonna skip right past 40 and go straight to 10 millimeter. All right, that's 180 grain hollow point. I'm gonna put it right below those 45 rounds. All right, let's see what the 10 millimeter did. Ten millimeter hit right here. Turn it around. The anti-spalling cracked. No penetration. All right, shield's holding up pretty darn well. Now we're going to shoot the viewing port. We're going to use nine millimeter to do that. We're going to use the same stack that we did when we first started shooting the shield with nine millimeter. First off, I have the extreme defender. This again is the bullet that defeated 2A soft armor. Right below that we have the Liberty ammunition 9mm, which has been known to defeat soft armor 2A in the past as well. And then the 124 grain ball. We're just gonna walk across the, uh, the little viewing port there. Start off on the left hand side, work my way right. That was the extreme penetrator. I'm sorry, the extreme defender. Here goes the Liberty. And then 124 grain ball. Guys, that's pretty freaking cool. All right, Extreme Defender, Liberty, and 124 grain ball. Stopped all three threats. There's a slight bow out here that I can feel. A little bit there and nothing here. So it looks like the 124 grain I mean, it's, it's actually sticking out here on this side. The others went completely into the viewing port. This one has no bulge on the backside whatsoever. It's perfectly smooth. The Liberty slight bump, the Extreme Defender, that bullet is hard to stop, guys. It's uh, It really wants to try to make its way through this 3A body armor. That's pretty darn impressive, though. That was cool. Now we're gonna step outside the realm of what it's technically rated for. I'm gonna take my M1 carbine that shoots a 30 caliber projectile, it's 110 grain bullet, and I'm gonna shoot it on the left side, top left side of the shield, and see if it can stop this little hot rod of a round. All right, let's see what happened. I don't know. Oh! 
Guys, it didn't make it through. It really, really tried. You can see right there, it did not penetrate. It came really close, but it stopped it. That's pretty darn impressive. All right, well, let's up the game a little bit more. Let's, uh, let's see what the P90 does. Now, we're gonna use Jason's SBR. He does not have a sight on it, thanks, Jason. So we're gonna have to kind of wing it. I'm gonna try to hit it somewhere over in here with the two rounds that we brought out this afternoon to see what the, uh, the P90 does to it. That's pretty impressive with the M1 carbine, though. Now it's time for the sightless P90. We're gonna try to use the backup sights that are on here since we don't have a regular optic. We have two rounds loaded. We have the standard ball round first, then we have the green tip second. We're gonna take two shots on the left-hand side of the target there. Hopefully, these rudimentary sights are somewhat on. Okay, there was the first one. I'm just a little bit low, so I'll aim at that first one. Hopefully, hit just below that. All right, two rounds fired. Let's go ahead and make sure the weapon's safe here really quick. All right, let's go check this out. So here we go with the 5.7. First round was the ball round, and this is the green tip. Once again, it looks like we hit the structure with the first round right there is where it should be. It hit just below the support brace. No penetration. The second round hit right here. That was the green tip. You can see the bulge there, but neither one of those rounds penetrated. So, so far the shield has stopped everything we've shot at it. All right. <laughs> now we're really gonna up the ante a little bit. All right, now we have the Origin 12 gauge. I have two rounds loaded, the Remington slug on the bottom and then the double lot buck on the top. So the first round that's gonna go down range will be the double lot buck. We're gonna hit the shield where it's probably already previously been hit. I'm gonna try not to. I uh, hit that, a spot that we've already hit with one of the handgun rounds, but um, there's no guarantee I'll be able to avoid it. The sight is pretty much way over the bore on this thing. At distance, it's pretty much on steel, but I'm kind of guessing at this point where this is going to hit. So, first round is the buckshot. Oh! All right, I'm going to aim really low, and I'm going to put that second round towards the bottom middle will be the slug. Oh, holy cow, man, that's some energy transfer. Okay, the weapon's safe, bolts locked to the rear. Let's take a look at this. Holy cow. So we definitely, with the buckshot, hit right on top of another round. Now keep in mind, we have eight pellets, guys, that hit in an area about this big. And it stopped it. That's unbelievable. It hit right here. You can see where all eight pellets hit right here, right behind the certification label, and it did not come through. Even more impressively, look at the size of the bulge on that, on the backside, the, the deformation from the 12 gauge slug. It hit right here. You can see how much it's pushed that armor in, but check that out. Holy cow. It has stopped everything we have shot at it. I think I got a 5.56 five, in the car. We're gonna have to try that too. Man, that's impressive. That's cool. All right, guys, so now we're gonna try the 450 Bushmaster. This is a, a 250 grain projectile, and the gun probably won't cycle because we have the suppressor off of it, and it's set up for suppressor use. It has a scope on it. I'm gonna try to hit it, in that little open area between where the double lot buck went and where the slug went. I don't know that I'll be able to do this because again, this is zeroed for 100 yards. Ah, hit it right in the spot I wanted to. All right. Make sure the weapon's clear. <laughs> These things are leaving some big holes. So check that out. That's where the 450 hit and it still did not make it through. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. The only thing I got left, guys, is a 5.56 in the car. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit it with a 5.56 and see what happens. It's definitely capable of stopping all handgun threats and even some rifle threats like the M1 uh, carbine. 
That's pretty darn impressive. Let's see what 556 five, does to it, just out of curiosity. All right, guys, final test. Take some ZQI M855 ball. This is a NATO load that has the steel penetrator in the bullet. We're gonna go ahead and single load it into my BCM. Looks like we have a little bit of an open spot on the bottom left corner there. I have my DI optical red dot sight. I'm gonna talk about these here very, very soon. I'm gonna see if I can plant this round right in that bottom left corner. All right. This has to have gone through. So there's where I shot. And <laughs> it went right on through. That's expected. But otherwise, guys, this shield has seen no penetration from any of the other calibers we shot at it this afternoon, including taking some straight on hits with rounds like the Extreme Defender that are known to defeat to defeat to a body armor. So I would say this sucker can really take a beating. And uh, now I know that my VPD, the guys that are at my local police department that are using these, have a good shield. That's really, really impressive. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out to the range with us this afternoon to do a little bit of shooting with and a little bit of shooting at the Highcom Ballistic Shield. Guys, I have to tell you, I'm thoroughly impressed with the performance of this shield. A couple of things really kind of surprised me. The 30 carbine didn't make it through at such close range, and I was also impressed with the performance of the double lot buck with all eight pellets hitting so close together at such close range, not doing more damage than either one of those did to the shield. As you can see, it's defaced pretty nastily on the back side here, but I'm still able to use the shield, still able to hold it. Let's see if I can still use it in a defensive situation. Yep, guys, this thing still works. It may be a little bit beat up, but I have no doubt that it'll take several more nine millimeter rounds, 45, 10 millimeter. That's pretty darn impressive. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, if you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. That's the best possible way to support us here at the channel. And if you haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll talk to you guys soon.